What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a historical currency graph. And let me just go ahead and click on play to show you what I mean. So once you click on play, it's going to load the API and then it's going to give us a bunch of statistics on how the currency changed over time. So this is a small graph on how Euro converted to the Danish crown over the past year. So as you can see up here, it started a bit higher and now we're a bit lower. But uh, we also have a small chart down here that tells us the dates of how much the currency was worth on each date. And Euro to DKK is a very bad example, but if we go to Japanese Yen, let's go JYP, uh, JPY, and click on rerun, you'll notice that it will load again and we'll get a different graph that shows us how one Euro was converted to the Japanese Yen. It will also give us the current rate at the top, which says one Euro to Japanese Yen is 130. And this works for up to one year. It doesn't matter which year, it will always work for one whole year. And you can also edit the amount of days here. So let's pretend we just want to know the historical data for the past 30 days. Just go ahead and click on 30, click on run, and you'll get a chart that tells you how it was for the past 30 days. Now, if you want to go, let's pretend two years back, we can go ahead and multiply 365 by two. Uh, so we'll get 730. And if we click on run, you'll see that we'll get the historical data for two years ago, but only for one year, because this API only allows you to get one year at a time. So one year ago, this is what it looked like for one euro to Japanese yen. And you'll have the graph metrics over here that says 2019-0404, and that's when it starts. And this is the date it ended. And that's all the information we have over here. But yeah, that's what we're going to be making in this tutorial. It's just a very simple currency conversion graph for the past year or for the past two years or for how many days you want. And it's going to be using a lot of the basic libraries such as pandas, matplotlib and requests, of course. But let's get started immediately by creating a new project. So the first thing we have to do inside here is create a few imports. So let's go to our terminal and inside here, we need to first install the requests module. So pip install requests. Then we have to go and type in pip install matplotlib. And finally, let's go ahead and install pandas. We won't really be using it, but it's always nice to have to show and clean some data. Perfect. Now we can close this and we can go ahead and create some imports. So the first package we should import is the requests module. Then we should go ahead and import pandas as PD. Then we should import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We should also import the date time and that will take care of the imports we have to create. Next, we have to go ahead and create a function. So we're just gonna type in def get yearly rates. And inside here, we should provide four parameters. First, it's the amount we want to convert. Then it is the base currency that we are converting from. And we need to provide the converted currency and the amount of days we want to convert for or to show history for. And the first step is to get the date and time, the current date and time and subtract one year from it so we can get the yearly historical data. So we'll just type in today date is going to equal date time dot date time dot now. Then we will type in date underscore one year and that's going to equal parentheses today date minus date time dot delta or time delta and inside here we'll specify that days is going to equal one and that's going to be multiplied by the amount of days i'm just going to set set the start date then we have to actually create the request so all i'm going to do here is specify a comment that says requests and we have to start with the url which is going to be a formatted string and it's going to be https colon double slash api dot exchange rate dot host slash time series. And then we have to create a payload where we can insert the parameters we want into the URL, of course. So we're going to create a dictionary. And the first thing we have to specify is the base currency that we want to convert when making this API request. So currency amount, which is the amount we want to convert the start date, which is when we want to get the data where we wanted to start from. And that's going to be the date one year dot date and the end date, which should be today's date. And to get today's dates, we just type in today underscore dates 
dot date. Now we can put that there to make things a bit easier to read. So as I specified earlier, this API only allows you to get up to one year of data, which means if you put 700 as the amount of days, it's going to go back two years in time and give you one year of data starting from the start date, but it's only up to one year. So whatever you do, it's always gonna go up to 365 days and you can specify the start date and the end date. This was the easiest way to make it so you can get up-to-date data. So that's how I did it. I just prefer to have the past year of data. If you want to get five years of data, for example, you're going to have to create an algorithm that adds these together and you'll be able to display five years but for this simple tutorial, we're just gonna do one year. And then we have to go and create the response, which is going to use the requests module dot get. We're going to insert our URL and we need to provide the parameters, which is going to be the payload that we created right above. And then we need to provide the data, which is going to be our response dot JSON. Next, we have to go and aggregate the data. So we're just gonna go ahead and type in create a dictionary to store data. And the first thing we're going to do is type in currency underscore history, and that's going to equal an empty dictionary. And we also want to write rate history array, which is just going to equal an empty list. Then we should go ahead and type in for item in data at the index of rates, which is the key for the JSON data to get the rates. We want to get the current date, which is going to be the key of the rates because each rate is going to be associated with a date. And we want to get the currency rate for each item, which is going to equal the data at the index of rates at the index of item at the index of the converted currency because each one of the dates is going to have a million currencies to convert and we only want to get the one that we have selected over here then we're going to start by adding items to our history map so we're just going to go ahead and type in currency history at the index of the current date is going to equal a list of the currency rate. And then we're going to call our rate history array because we also want to append the numbers to an array that we can show in our matplotlib so we can create a very nice graph. So we're just going to write rate history array dot append and we want to append the currency rate. So you're going to end up with a list of around 365 values and then we're going to use pandas just to display that nicely. We can go ahead and type in clean data and we can go panda data is going to equal a data frame pd dot data frame which is going to take the currency history and we're going to call transpose so we can switch the axes from x to y and let's set a tag for the columns so let's go pd data dot columns and that's just going to equal the rate now we can go ahead and print the rate or print the data so we're just going to go pd underscore data and there's one more thing i should specify before we move on and that is to set a option so let's go to set option and inside here we want to display dot max rows and we're going to set this rule to none as the default now let's go ahead and test this function without the graph it's very fast to add the graph but let's just make sure it works so what we have to do is call our get yearly rates we want to convert let's say one euro again you need to make sure that the currency you enter is in uppercase otherwise it will not recognize it if you want to simplify the program of course you can convert it somewhere here so the user doesn't have to worry about this but to make this tutorial fast and simple we just have to insert all the currencies in uppercase so let's go from euro to gbp and of course they both have to be strings and let's do it for the past 90 days Let's see what happens when we do that. And as soon as the program compiles, you're gonna notice that we're gonna have historical data for Euro to GBP for the past 90 days. So it started at 89 and today it is at 0.85. So that just means that everything's working perfectly and that we can add the final details to make it actually show up on a graph. So let's go ahead and create another comment which says plot data. So we want to call our library, which is plt and call.plot. And we want to plot the rate history array. Then we should call our plot y label. And that's going to equal a formatted string, which first is going to take the amount and then space and another currency. And it's going to say to the converted currency. So it's going to get the amount of the currency and it's going to say it was converted to this currency. Then we're going to make an X label, which is going to be simple, just going to say days, which is going to be at the bottom of the graph. And then we should give this plot a title which is going to say current rate for the amount of the currency to the converted currency is going to be the 
great history array at the index of minus one, which gets the last element of the array, which is the most up-to-date currency exchange we have. And the most important part of this is to actually show the graph. So plot.show. And here we're gonna go ahead and type in 365 and click on run. So first you're gonna notice that we're going to have a lot of values starting from exactly one year ago and end up at 0.85. This is really nice that pandas could actually clean this up for us. So it looks really nice. We have the rate tag at the top. Then we also got this graph that says it started around here and it ended around here. So it's a very nice representation and you can of course resize it. It's pretty nice. But let's pretend we want to get some data from a long time ago. We can go ahead and type in 1000 and this should go up to around three years ago and see how the historical data was back then. Now let's go ahead and rerun the program and you'll see it will get the data from 2018, 07, and it's going to go all the way down to 2019, 07. And we're gonna be provided with a graph for that as well. And what's the final thing to show is that you can put any amount you want, of course, let's pretend 19 USD for the past 30 days to GBP. We'll go ahead and click on refresh, stop and rerun. And here you'll see 30 days from USD to GBP, which is 13 pounds from $19. And let's go back to the graph, which is much easier to read. You'll see current rate for 19 USD to GBP is 13.7. And you can see the historical rate over here. It also says on the Y axis that this was 19 USD to GBP and the amount of days this is going through. So yeah, that's actually all I wanted to show in this tutorial. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.